Hey guys, this guy here from YCG, your casual gamer. And in the next few episodes, we're going to work on interaction text via line trace. What I mean by this is when you jump inside a scene and you walk up to something you can interact with, there's going to be a text that pops up at the bottom. If you look away, it goes away, come back, and it comes back. If you're out of reach, it goes away. There's actually a lot of work behind this. That's why I wanted to create a two part. First part, we're going to take care of the line trace and the uh, uninteract event. And then the second episode, we're going to do our blueprint and add a text to our UMG and everything is going to connect together and also we're going to change a few uh, basic collision to the static one of the static mesh so stay tuned alright so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, modify the uh, blueprint interface if you don't have one just right click blueprint interface and that's it mine is called on interact and double click inside so now I already have a function over here and that was made for a line trace to interact with objects that I did in season one. If you've been following the episode, you already have it. And we're just going to add a function to this one and we're going to call it to be interact. And that's it. Compile and save. You're done with the interface. Just close this. Now jump inside the first person character and this is where we're going to do the bulk of the work for today. The first thing we're going to add is we're going to add the variable for the text. So we're going to call it text, no, interaction text, interaction text. There we go. And change the variable to, oops, not vector, text over here. And we're going to put it inside text category, like this. Compile and save. Now we need to make the line trace. And I already have a line trace from season one, and it's pretty much going to be the same thing as this. It's just going to be a small change in the second part of our uh, uh, video right here. But the bulk is going to be like this. So if you just want to copy this, but we're going to do it together. So in the event graph, we're going to make a new function, and we're going to call it uh, C, no, trace. Um, interaction text compile and save and then we just build our line trace so we're gonna get the player camera so just drag that out we're gonna get world location also get I believe it's the forward vector yeah that's it we're gonna go to get forward vector now over here we're going to multiply it by a float and over here we're going to plus vector plus vector so over here these two are going to add up and here we're going to multiply it by the max use distance but we're going to make a new variable <coughs> sorry so drag out of there and promote to variable and let's call it a max scene distance and the reason I make two of them is because otherwise over here you let's say your max use distance is 220 and if I put the max scene distance to the same thing I'm gonna put 210 I'm gonna tell you why and the reason I do this is because 220 is a very precise a number and if let's say you can see at the same distance as you can use sometimes you might not be able to interact with because you're going to be at the verge of the limit and it doesn't work so to make sure that the player always is able to interact with the object that he sees you put the, the scene distance lower that way you know that when the player sees the interaction he can he's already in range to interact with so now from here we're going to do a line trace trace by channel I believe yeah like that and now we're going to connect the start to the beginning of the camera that's where you want the line trace to start and the end part is going to be the forward vector <coughs> multiplied by the max scene distance and added to the world location we're going to draw a debug just so, so we can see if everything works well. 
Let's leave it at draw time this. And I'll compile and save. And if you want to know more in detail what is a line trace by channel, on the in the season one I'm I go more in details with it. But since I already did it with you guys, I don't want to repeat anything. We're just gonna build it together fast and easy. So we're here we're gonna break the results and uh, compile and save and then from the hit actor we're gonna go get to be interact message and over here we're gonna branch it let's bring this down branch this together like this and if it's true then you call the to be interact event compile and save and you are done with your line trace let's put a comment call it trace to C. Alright, and since we did the debug, we're going to put that back to none afterward, but we're going to leave this like that for now. Now, with the debug on, if I get inside the scene, save everything, you should be able to see... I don't see it. Oops! I know why. Sorry. I forgot to add it because I didn't call the function over here. So in the sequencer, we're going to add a pin, and I'm going to put this in the middle. So let's control grab this and put it like that. And over here, we're going to call our new trace, trace interaction. There you go. That's very important. And trace to see function. There you go. And now it should work. I jump inside. Yeah, there we go. Now you see all the interaction and you see when it hits. And you see that the distance is pretty fair to the character. So now we're done for the line trace. The only thing I wanted to add, uh, since we're going to get the other part of the video ready, in the season two, I'm going to make a material. I'm going to make a bright red. So I'm going to delete this. <coughs> it's pretty simple material. You're just going to make a material, call it red, jump inside if it wants to, and from the base color we're going to get vector, constant vector 4, and just pick the color red. And like that. And apply, and we're going to use this in the next episode for the uh, blueprint. And you're done with this. And the last thing I wanted to do before we get to the second part is we're going to do the... So for this over here, I changed the collision because the collisions weren't good anymore. So if you jump inside the collision, what it was before, show collision over here. Oh, see, I didn't, I didn't undo what I changed. <clears throat> so this square over here, wasn't there if you guys have been following the videos you guys have a square like this and what's going to happen is when you're going to start interacting with the button that's over here it's going to collide with those collisions over here therefore you won't be able to interact with your object so the quick fix is i just lowered this one over here and i dragged out another cube just to make it precise collision and i just did it like that just to make it nice and dandy like this and maybe bring it up that's it there we go and it's always going to be in the wall so you don't have to worry so much about this save everything and we're done alright so that's it for the first part see you in the next part <laughs>